Well, hello everybody. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. We are at PDAC, the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada in Chile, Toronto. Today, right now, I'm going to interview and we're going to talk with Terry Lynch of Power Nickel Company. Good day, Terry. Byron, great to be here. Tell the people out there who may not know what Power Nickel is or what, what, what is Power Sur Nickel? Surprisingly, we're in the nickel business. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. And we're in it uh, just south of James Bay, hence the power. So uh, we're, we're expanding the nickel uh, deposit called NISC, and uh, it's going great. We've got uh, what we think is going to be Canada's next uh, commercial nickel mine. So you're in, in James Bay, you're in classic old uh, pre-Cambrian Canada. This is all billion and two billion year old stuff. It's the, it's, the original, it's the original magma that made the Earth's crust with some of that nickel. Huh? Indeed so. Yep, indeed so. And so what kind of deposit is it? It's an ultramafic deposit. So other analogs in Canada would have been Lynn Lake, 22 million tons, Voices Bay, plus 50. So we had a historic resource of 3.1. We've uh, done almost 15,000 meters of drilling that we're going to be updating, we think, in July, June, July, uh, and probably get to 8 to 10 million tons. And that would be, uh, that would be the start. Okay, now, as I understand it, there's two kinds of nickel. There's, the, there's that laterite nickel that, from Indonesia, places like that, where it's all eroded uh, by the weather. And then there's the, the good stuff, you might say. Uh, you have the good stuff. We have right? the good stuff, the sulfides, yeah. So, so it, it basically can be made in a class one nickel, which is what the uh, battery companies need. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, in, in our case, it's a much higher grade. So it's like, you know, 1% north. And uh, that makes it much more environmentally friendly to mine and manufacture. So, uh, so that's a lot less energy intensive as well. Another angle on nickel, as I understand it, is it's highly recyclable uh, in its, uh, in, you know, in future iterations. Is that a, is that a fair statement? Yeah, no, nickel is, is one of the most recyclable metals, and the, and there's uh, probably almost I don't know 20 percent of it of the market today is recycled nickel. And so traditionally, the nickel market, a lot of it went into stainless steel. Uh, you mentioned battery metals. Can you just tell people who may not be aware what, what's going on with batteries and nickel? Why yeah, people so hear lithium batteries, but nickel batteries? Yeah. So the, the, the core driver of the nickel market is still stainless. Seventy percent of the market. Mm -hmm. Compound annual growth rate of six percent. It's called urbanization. As people move from villages to cities and towns, they're buying pots and pans, fridges and stoves, stainless steel. Uh, right now, electrification batteries, uh, driven primarily by electrical vehicles, but other battery uses, is about ten percent of the nickel market. But last year we had like 10 million electric cars sold. In four years we're expected to be at 40 million. So it's expected to, by the 2030, to go to 50% of the market. So I don't know where we get all that nickel, but theoretically it's gonna be in high demand. So I'm just doing a little math in my head here. If nickel demand is growing at least 6% a year, and maybe more up to say eight or 10% a year, it's, the nickel demand is gonna double in about seven years. That's what they're saying, yeah. And uh, I think they uh, the forecast from Wood McKenzie and you know um, other you know researchers are something in the neighborhood of 60 new nickel mines will be needed. So I was just going to say, where where are these 60 new nickel mines? I know where be? one is, but you, I don't know where the others. Other, so so you have one, but the other 59, it's it's up to them. Huh? Yeah, you know we'd like to think so. I mean, we we certainly are well well advanced in that. We think uh, we think probably by you know as I said, end of June, early July, we'll get to a, a commercial quantity, mm -hmm. and that's always a big thing you know for a junior miner because you're a zero in mining until you become a one. So you're just a, you know, you're just one of those guys with a hope and a prayer, and we know how long the odds are to finding a mine. But once you get to a commercial quantity, then boom, you know, the market notices, and then all of a sudden you get valued properly. Okay, so uh, Power Nickel, tell us about the company itself. What's your, how big are you? Share structure? How do people buy your shares? Things like that. Yeah, yeah. So about 120 million shares outstanding, around 30 cents Canadian or so. Um, you know, we we basically our stocks on TSXV. It's also on the uh, over-the-counter bulletin board. Okay and in, in Germany on the uh, Frankfurt Exchange, mm -hmm. so fairly easy to buy. And uh, yeah, we've had a, a good bounce back. I would say we've gone from about 10 cents to 30 cents in the last two or three months. Which that, That's it, called a triple. That's called a triple. And people say, well, I missed it. And I say, guys, do you know that we actually financed two years ago at 25 cents and 40? So we actually just, you missed a Ukrainian dip. You, you haven't missed the run. The run's coming. Well, traditionally, speaking of Ukraine, traditionally a lot of the world's nickel came from this place called Russia, and we seem to be having trade issues with Russia these days. Is that another angle to the to the whole nickel story? That is another angle. Uh, I would say it's more driven by the Inflation Reduction Act, you know, which is basically the, the major focus on that is uh, North American supply chains mm -hmm. and and uh, 
uh, I guess, uh, you know, in, in, in Canada, that will be very beneficial to nickel development here. Uh, because, you, you know, you mentioned earlier about the lithium iron batteries. Well, it's actually lithium nickel iron batteries. It's, it's, it, nickels is, you know, you, you, uh, Elon Musk was just doing his uh, Tesla day the other day and he said the most important metal is nickel. You know, so I, I really think that's uh, the future is coming to nickel. Have, nickel mines have not had their run yet. And just like lithium's taken off, nickel's going to take off. So it may very well be that just because people miss the first leg up, there's still a few more legs, a lot more legs uh, left in this run. Eh? Yeah, I mean, I think in this run, not just for power nickel, but for many junior miners, there's going to be 10 Xers and 100 Xers. And it's been a long while since the market's seen that, but it's coming. People don't, people can't process that, the idea of 100 baggers. I mean, even like 20 and 30 baggers in, the, you know, the gold space or whatever, you know, that people are impressed with that. But, but in the past, there have been 100, 100 X uh, yeah. multiples haven't there? Yeah, there has been 100x multiples and the, the cool thing right now is you can actually look at a number of these you know commodity based companies and how much progress they've made in the ground and relative to some certain peers you can see hey there's a 10x there and then if they make more progress you can see more you know so this is uh, probably the first time in history I, I can think of where there's been such savagely priced uh, almost across the board so boy if you're an investor you start doing your due diligence in uh, junior mining, values are tremendous. There's, you don't have to buy the hope and the prayer stuff. You can buy stuff that's already got the goods in the ground and, and still make a wampum of money. Well, thank you so much. Everybody out there, thank you for watching. Uh, Terry Lynch, Power Nickel. They have a website. They have presentation. Uh, TSX Venture Exchange and the OTC in the United States as well as Germany. Uh, thank you so much, and we wish you well, sir. Great. Thanks, for, Brian. Great to be here.